Hi and welcome. In this video I'm going to be talking about the current range of software defined radios from SDR Play, uh, their RSP range. At the end of this month, November 2019, the RSPDX will become available to purchase with a new version of SDR Uno 1.33 which supports this unit and uh, I will be showing a little bit on that at the end of this video as there's a couple of features in there which I really like. So a little bit about me, I'm not paid by SDR Play, I do not work for SDR Play. They have sent me this RSPDX for testing and also allowed me access to the beta software. I um, really appreciate uh, that from the guys over at SDR Play. I have owned, or say I should say own every RSP device that they've made. Uh, I'll make it quite clear that uh, I am a big fan of the SDR Play devices. I do own numerous other SDRs from other manufacturers and developers, but these are the ones I always end up coming back to and using the most. I help out on a couple of the independent Facebook group pages for SDR Play and SDR Uno. I also run the independent SDR Play forum, and I'll put links to these in the video description. Now this is just my personal opinion of how I use them. If you've never bought a, an SDR or are looking to purchase an RSP, this may help you make your choice. Uh, I will go over how I use them, how they fit into, into my listening style, uh, and also how some of these are used and why you might want to either pick one device over, over another one. So over on the SDR Play website, there is a data sheet for the RSPDX, which goes in more detail about, about the new unit and uh, what it can be used for, software that can be used with its benefits and features. But at the bottom of the first page, there's a great comparison um, of where the strengths lie and what is this, which is similar between all three units. So they all cover from one kilohertz to two gigahertz, and that's continuous. There's no gaps. They can all view up to 10 megahertz of visible bandwidth. They're all 14-bit ADCs. They've got uh, software selectable filters as well as some automatic filters. They all have a bias T output if you want to power up an LMA. They all connect in the same way with a Type B USB cable. It's like a printer cable, and that and that is a USB two. And some of the main differences between them is the RSP1A as a single import, single tuner. The RSPDX has three imports, again a single tuner. And when we get to the Duo, that has three imports, but is a dual tuner. And more on that a little bit later on. So, firstly, I'm going to start with the RSP1A. This superseded the RSP1. And... Um, that went from a 12-bit to a 14-bit ADC. The, these have proved very, very popular because of the price points, about £112 shipped in the UK, including delivery and VAT. Now, so it is a plastic case, RF shielded. There is an optional, not from SDR Play, but it was designed by Mike Ladd of the SDR Play technical team. And... That's a metal case upgrade. I just like, like, like the metal case. That's why I've, I've changed mine. But it is uh, just makes it a little bit more robust. These are available from Amazon, from uh, eBay, and I've also seen on the RTL SDR blog page as well, the uh, shop there. Now, having what, only one antenna import means that you, well, if you have more than one antenna, you've either got to swap that over or use an antenna switch. And because of the nature of SDR, they can do so many different things with them. There's so many bits of software from digital decoding, um, web weather sats, L bands, and you know the, the list goes on. And uh, Mike Ladd of the SDR Play team, he was never known to venture out of uh, zero to, to thirty megahertz. You know, he, he, he refused to go any higher. As uh, in this last year, suddenly been seen up in the L band doing lots of videos and showing how that works. And it just shows how your interest can be peaked and can take you out of your comfort zone to sort of learn something new. 
and uh, you can tell with Mike's videos just the enthusiasm he has for the devices. So a great device and uh, at a great price point. So now we'll talk about the DX. This this is the new SDR from SDR Play. Lots of videos out there currently of reviews it's had and uh, all very, very positive, specifically below the two megahertz, uh, how well that it works there and how on the really low frequencies we've got a new five, 500 hertz uh, filter. And uh, I've never really played before in those bands, uh, non-direction beacons and things like that. I've had a lot of fun actually getting down there and even though I've tried lots of different SDRs, this is the one that's worked very well for me to do that. It is a single tuner device, so the antenna are selected in software, so you can choose between them, but that gives the advantage that you're not going to use a switch or anything like that. And as many of us find in this hobby, we do tend to grow and change, and we tend to find that one antenna is never enough. Now, the new BNC connector on this works from one kilohertz up to 200 megahertz now where on previous model the RSP2 and the RSP Pro uh, They had a high Z the same as as the duo and that only went up to 30 megahertz so That gives a, a lot more flexibility and being a BNC a lot of us have gone over to using magnetic loops and things like that. So um, That's been a, a very worthwhile addition Being a single tuner And having multiple ports means that uh, it gives a lot more flexibility to be able to use this across its full range without swapping antennas or anything like that. You see, you can have a HF antenna, a UHF, and a VHF. So now we move on to the RSP Duo. Now, this is a dual tuner device, so it's like having two SDRs in a single case. And the benefit of that is that if you have a computer or laptop that you are limited on USB ports, this might be a great choice if you want to run more, more, more than one SDR. Could it have one single import? I also use this for comparing. And it's great to have them both up on the screen at the same time, side by side, and I can do direct comparisons between antennas and things like that. This again has three antenna ports, the high Z and two SMA. The high Z goes from one to 30 megahertz, great for long wires, or can use balens and that for connecting such as um, loops. Now, one special feature this has that uh, this do these don't is diversity. And what that is, we can take the signals from two separate antennas and merge them or phase them. So uh, where I found this most useful is on HF again. If you've got fading signals, we can actually gain up to, in optimum conditions, three dB of signal to noise ra ratio improvement. Now, with, with that said, there's a lot of experimenting you need to do. The distance between the antennas, the conditions, what antennas you're using, all make a difference. If you've got two HF antennas, this is excellent for that, especially chasing those weak signals or all those difficult signals. On HF between the two, below two megahertz, the RSPDX, very, very good, and uh, for the really low frequencies that 500 hertz filter really comes into its own um, I've not found another SDR I'd say work, works as well as this in, in that region now we, again with having dual tuners it means we're running them separately we, we can do different things uh, it has got an ADSB mode for those who like uh, air traffic and so you can using that for ADS-B signals on, on one tuner and on the second tuner, listen to your local ATIS or tower, etc. I also use it if I'm browsing sort of uh, the HF bands that I can be decoding either something off L band or, or such as weather sats, etc. on the second. Or, and as the, the audio from these can be outputted separately, I can have analog on one side and digital go, go to a decoder on the other. So I find it very, very useful. Now, in, in conclusion, the RSP1A is a great device if you just need one antenna or, and happy to swap around for, for using it, uh, you know, at the price point it's at, you know, what, £112 ship, ship within the UK, doing the VAT and delivery, you know, that is excellent and uh, tough to beat at that price. If 
below two megahertz is something you're really interested in, then your SPDX is is brilliant. It, it, it really is, and uh, it's really opened up that whole world for me. But you know, on the really low frequencies, which I've struggled with in the past, and. Uh, by all accounts, that's going to be shipped for about two hundred pounds within the UK, including VAT and delivery. And they, the the duo is two hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, and if you do have two HF antennas, then that could be a, a really good choice as well. You know, it is a really difficult to choose between these two. If you need a diversity and the dual tuners, the duo. If you don't need a, just a single tuner, then the DX would, would be my choice. So, and finally, a little bit on version 1.33 of SGR Uno. We've got a new save workspace button. I think that's absolutely brilliant and a much needed feature instead of using the control and W shortcut keys. I also like now, as we select in the bands, they highlight green, so it just stands out a little more. And we also have a notification button, which is tell, telling us what to be in as well. So there's very different ways of telling us where we are within the software. Hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.